Welcome to the Logos 8 Bible Study Series. In these nine videos, you will learn how to use some of the basic but powerful features of Logos available in the basic and fundamental packages to help you study your Bible. We will follow the well-known inductive Bible study process using John 7, 1-39 as the main passage and examine the significance of Jesus referring to himself as the living water and the light of the world during the Feast of Tabernacles. There are four steps to inductive Bible study, the ABCs, or considering the author, background, and context of a passage, followed by observation, interpretation, and application. This video will focus on how Logos can help you discover the ABCs. This first step involves asking questions like, when did the author write the book? What ancient cultural influences may have shaped the passage? How does the passage fit in with what comes before and after it? How do the answers to these questions inform how we interpret a passage? The Faith Life Study Bible in your Logos Library is a great resource to begin discovering background information about a passage that will help bridge the gap from ancient context to life today. Begin by clicking the library icon in the toolbar at the top left of the screen. This will open your library resources. Type Faith Life Study Bible in the search box and select it. Then type John in the reference box and hit Enter, or select John in the drop-down. Then click Introduction to John. Here we learn the book of John illustrates what it looks like when God the Son comes to dwell among his people, and that John's Gospel profoundly shows how God's Son, Jesus, makes it possible for us to have an eternal relationship with God the Father. Further down, we learn the author of John is John the Apostle, although it is possible that another church leader, whom the early church called John the Elder, is the author or final compiler of this gospel. We learn that the book was most likely written between 85 and 95 AD. This article is full of additional information about the cultural background, structure, and themes of the book of John. Pause the video and take a few minutes to read it in its entirety. Now that you've taken a few minutes to look at the background for John as a whole, let's zoom in a level and select the pericope, or passage, you would like to research. For this part of the study, type John 7, 1-39 in the reference box under Faith Life Study Bible and hit Enter. You will see a verse-by-verse -verse breakdown of John 7, 1-39, telling you that in John chapter 7, verse 1, for example, the Feast of Passover had already passed. Hovering over the John 7, 2 reference displays the verse. Clicking it opens your preferred Bible to that verse. John 7, verse 2 says a key feast was at hand. This gives a hint to the time of year John 7 takes place in, since Passover, which is in the spring, had already occurred and this feast was about to begin. Clicking the blue highlighted word festivals opens a pane on the right, giving theological background to the feast. We learn that these feasts, or moed in Hebrew, were regularly occurring community events that recognized God's work and presence with his people. We also learn that each major Israelite feast recognized a specific aspect of God's saving work. Scrolling down the list of feasts to the Feast of Tabernacles, we learn that this feast commemorates the period of the Israelites' wilderness wanderings directly following the exodus from Egypt, and that it lasted seven days. We learn it is also called the Feast of Ingathering, since it gathered the people together after the harvesting season and was the final pilgrim feast of Israel. Clicking the blue highlighted note next to the John 7-2 entry opens up more background information on the feast based on an Old Testament passage, Leviticus 23, 33-43. We learn the Hebrew name for this festival is Sukkot, which comes from a verb meaning to cover over, and that during this feast, the Israelites were to take tree branches and fasten them into small huts or booths, small, partially enclosed structures with makeshift roofs, to live in. Scanning the numerous references to Old Testament scripture relating to the Feast of Tabernacles, it's clear this feast was not a new concept for the Jewish people of that time. 
click the small back arrow at the top of the pane and Logos will take you back to our passage. John 7 verse 8 lets us know that at first Jesus was not going up to the feast. But notice that the Faith Life Study Bible tells us the Greek present tense can have the sense of, I am not going right now. He was going. It just wasn't the appointed or right time to go. Scroll to John 7, 14 in the Faith Life Study Bible, which indicates the feast is now half over, and then to John 7, verse 37, that says, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Notice that the Faith Life Study Bible gives even more cultural information. That Jewish tradition prescribed additional rituals for the final day of this festival, culminating their week-long prayers for deliverance. Now, click the plus sign icon at the end of the John 737 note. Clicking this icon will open up a bit more information on the background of this phrase. On the Feast of Tabernacles, Part of the daily festival celebration involved bringing water from the Pool of Siloam and pouring it at the base of the altar, memorializing the miracle of the water from the rock in the wilderness, which had become symbolic for Messianic deliverance. We also learned the Festival of Tabernacles was associated with God providing rain, and that, interestingly, Zechariah 14 was to be read on the first day of this feast. On the seventh and last day of the festival, there was a special water-pouring ritual and light ceremony, a celebration of God's future restoration of Israel and the extension of salvation to the nations. Finally, look over the notes for John 7:38 and the phrase, will flow rivers of living water. Here we learn that Jesus may have been paraphrasing Zechariah 14, verse 8, since that chapter was read during the Feast of Tabernacles and that numerous other Old Testament passages represent salvation metaphorically as a life-giving source of water. One such verse listed is Isaiah 12, verse 3. Already we can begin to see this passage, especially with the context of the Feast of Tabernacles, carries messianic themes of God saving his people. Pause the video and take a few minutes to browse the Faith Life Study Bible entries for John 7, 1 through 39 to learn more about the background culture, and context of this passage. Depending on your base package, you may have additional resources not listed in this video to assist you. The Faith Life Study Bible is a great place to start forming your understanding of the ABCs of a passage. The valuable information you glean in this step of inductive Bible study will help you correctly interpret the passage later. We've explored the background of the Gospel of John and have started to look closer at our passage for contextual background. In our next video, we'll continue our exploration of the ABCs of the inductive Bible study method using additional resources found in our Logos library.